I'm John Buchanan. In this video, we're going to look at how to create a drum machine designer instrument from scratch. Now, most of the time that we work with drum machine designer, we're drawn towards choosing a preset kit. And the reason for that is that Logic have done an amazing job, or Apple have done an amazing job of configuring um, drum machine designers kits with not only sounds, but collections of effects per track, so that effectively when we're playing a drum machine designer kit, it's like this kind of full multi-track production. And there's a lot to be said for that. It gets us up and running um, really quickly. It's really vibey and inspirational to play those kits. But if you want to build a drum machine designer kit from scratch, choosing sounds one at a time and configuring how they work, that can be a really useful thing to do as well. So what we're gonna do is uh, see exactly how that's done. So what I'm gonna do is on this absolutely empty instrument channel strip, I'm going to select drum machine designer, which is underneath the rest of the list of instruments down here under the utility section. And when I select this, immediately what Logic will do is again launch the library. But this time, rather than choosing an entire kit, what I'm going to do is have an option to choose individual kit pieces. So you can see that straight away, I've got an empty kit over here, and I'm being told that there are a number of ways that I can add um, a sound to each individual pad. So one thing I can do is to drag an audio file in. So if I've got a folder of audio files, or if I've even got an audio file just sitting somewhere within my project and I want to turn it into a pad within my kit, I can do exactly that. Or I can use the library to kind of populate the instruments that I want to work with. So if I choose that approach, I can come over to the kicks folder, we'll start there, and I can audition sounds simply by clicking on them. So this gives me a chance to hear what each individual kick sounds like. And if I want to, I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard until I find something that I like. Now, if I decide that I like this blazing hot kick, which I do, I can click on it. And what I'll see firstly is I can see the overview of the waveform. I can also see the name of this individual kick, which is being updated because it's been named within the library. Now, if you're importing samples from anywhere within your project or from the finder window, it will import the name of the file itself, which is absolutely fine if the file is named correctly. Otherwise, you might need to rename each pad as you import sounds from elsewhere. But obviously, because the library has listed these instruments with their names, I don't have to worry about that if I decide to go through and build a library this way. So to move on to the next sound, all I've got to do is to click on it, and I'm uh, then in a position to populate it. And again, what I can do is to create a pad by clicking on the plus button, and effectively, I'm now back to square one, exactly the same place that I was before, and Logic assumes that the next sound that I want to add is a snare. And fine, I can sort of follow those guides if I want to, and go through and start adding sounds in that way, and no problem, I can do that. Um, let's go and find a sort of snare sound that feels like it might be quite good. You can see the snares actually start with a bunch of rim shots, and then I'm going to find um, the snares a bit uh, further down. So I'm going to import this sound, and again, simply by clicking on it, I can see that that's done. Now we can see straight away that so far, the two sounds that I've added have both come in as samples. And I know that because effectively what I'm doing here is I'm looking at a version of Logic Sampler. Now it's a very uh, sort, of, sort of small version of the sampler. In fact, it's called the Quick Sampler. But I can see straight away, partly because it's blue, but also because I can see the waveform outline of this individual sound. But I can also see that I've got three separate pages allowing me to change the behavior of these sounds using aspects of the two main sampler pages. So for instance, within here, what I could do would be to decide whether or not I want the kick up a drum to play as a one-shot sample, which means that every time I play it, it will play the whole sample. And it will do that whether or not I play an incredibly short note or a much longer one. It will just play the entire sound the whole way through. Or what I could do is to use classic mode, which effectively means that the sample will only play for as long as I hold the note down. So I now either only get the sort of full decay of that sound if I hold the note down for long enough. But I can also change other things about the way that the sound's gonna behave. I could adjust the, the length of this sample and a fade out to the end. So if I want a sort of punchier um, sample, then I can obviously uh, create one. And now we're losing the decay phase out of that. Um, and similarly, I can go through into the quick sampler detail page and do some other things too. So if I decided that I wanted this kick drum to be a different pitch, In either direction, I can tune it, and I can create fine-tune offsets as well, as well as creating envelopes for the pitch section. I can engage a filter so that the built-in filter within the sampler is um, acting and working on the sound too. 
So if I want to get rid of this kind of top end of this sound, I'm in a position to, and I can go through and create any changes I like, including creating some envelope shaping here as well. I've even got LFOs, which I can use as well, allowing me to bring some movement into a sound. So if I decided that I wanted to vary the pitch of this sample um, using an LFO, I can come into the mod matrix and I can create that change. So here, what I would do would be to choose an LFO as one of my uh, trigger points. I can then set the amount of that. And then over here, I can set a target. So if I wanted to, I could come and find the pitch of the sample. And now what we'll do is to get some movement into the pitch um, on this sound. And of course, you can see that happening here. It's so short, this shape, that what I'm going to need to do in order to really hear that properly is significantly increase the speed of uh, the LFO, come back into the mod matrix and maybe turn up the amount of that. So now what I've got is an LFO assignment now applied to that sound if I want to. And again, if I want to get rid of it, I can simply just put this back in the middle. So effectively on a per pad basis, I can go through and use the sampler in this way to make adjustments to the core sounds. So that's one way in which I can change the sounds that I'm adding. But let's suppose what I also want to do is to create effects for individual sounds within my track as well. So, so far I've got a kick and a snare. Here's my snare up here. So as I open up the track stack, which is automatically being populated with new tracks every time I add a new pad. If I was to come over here and press the plus button in pad three, what's gonna happen is that immediately a new track is going to be created for it. And if I click on this pad and I decide that I want this to be a hi-hat, I might decide that I like this hard bounce sound. And again, I can see that that's been populated. Again, it's been renamed and now I've got a third track. But of course, what that means is that if I click on an individual sound, I've got a, an absolutely sort of configurable channel strip available to me for just this kit piece. So this snare, for instance, what I could do would be to say, okay, well, actually I'd quite like to add my own chroma verb to it so that I've effectively got some reverb on this sound. I could uh, create a dry, a full dry mix as well as just um, bringing in a little bit of wet signal, set the decay time, and now, what I'm going to find if I just play the sound by itself is that I've got this reverb added. And at the moment, the reason why I'm hearing it at such a low pitch is because I'm playing just that track. The snare is mapped across the entire key range. If I come back to my track stack, I'm going to find that each individual kit piece is now mapped to just a single key. So my kick is on C1, my snare is going to be here, and now I'm hearing the reverb that I've added. And if it's too much, then what I can do is just to back it down so I've got a little bit uh, less ambience on it. So I can go through one sound at a time and I can populate um, a sort of uh, a collection of sounds in this way. But what I can also do is to swap any kit piece for drum synth. Now what this means is that if I click here on the kick, what I'm in a position to do is to swap the quick sampler for drum synth. Drum synth, as its name suggests, is a drum synthesizer. And by doing that, by swapping the sampler out for the drum synth instrument, you can see that effectively its parameters still become available in Drum Machine Designer. Drum synth literally can be configured within this same pad of sounds. So now what I've done is to create a new kick sound, which again, I'll be able to audition from C1. But what I can then do is to shape it and change it in a whole variety of ways from within this instrument. So if I decide that I want a shorter decay time for instrument, for instance, I can do that. Again, I can change pitch. I can change the tone, the overall shape of the sound. So I can decide how I want this kick to behave and literally any piece within my sampler can be swapped out for drum synth. And there are a number of ways in which that can happen. I'm gonna add one more fourth layer here. And what I'm gonna do straight away is to select drum synth so that it's available to me directly within the pad. And I can see that at the moment, because I was using the kicks before, there are actually a number of different instrument types that I can use here. So what I'm actually gonna do is to, uh, for this fourth pad, come and find a percussion piece. And again, what I've got is some sort of preset start points. So I could select this membrane sound, for instance. My fourth sound is gonna be here. So if I audition it from here, here it is. So I can pitch it up a bit decide how quickly it's going to attack, change its dissonance amount. 
and I can configure the sound however I like. So effectively, again, what I've got is a brand new percussion uh, instrument. Now, there's one thing that's really interesting. Let's suppose what I decide to do with this membrane instrument, again, is to add some effects. What I'm going to do, again, is to add a sort of chroma verb. This time I'm going to add something maybe a bit more like a kind of dark room kind of a, a sort of shape. Um, or sound or sort of an algorithm. I'm going to make the decay time a little bit longer. Again, I'm going to sort of configure this. But what I also want to do is add a little bit of bit crushing to this sound as well. I'm going to find that in the distortion menu. I'm going to come down to the bit crusher. I'm going to select 8-bit. I'm going to add a little bit of downsampling. Let's try that without the reverb. And what I'm also going to do is to um, see what it sounds like at its original pitch. Okay, I like this sound, and I like it with its bit crusher. It's got a different sort of quality to it. Now, what I can do within Drum Machine Designer is to resample this sound. Now, what that means is the pad is gonna play through the effects chain that I've created for it, and it's going to then create a brand new pad bounced through that effect. Now, at the moment, I've bypassed the reverb, so it's just going to print it with the bit crusher. To do that, what I can do is simply control click this pad, and I can select the resample pad option. What's then gonna happen is it's going to go through and create a brand new sound, which I can see is here, resample pad it's called. And it's created a lane for it here as well. And I can see that its core note is C2. What that means is that I should now have the original uh, membrane sound here on um, D sharp one. And sure enough, I can see that being triggered through its own set. Let's take its bit crusher off so we're not getting confused. So if I come down here, I can press D sharp one. There's the original membrane. Whereas on C2, I've now got the bit crushed version with that sound having passed through its effects chain. And now it's been resampled onto that pad. So I'm in a position to do that. And of course, if I want to, I can just rename this. So let's just do that now. And I can just call this resampled membrane and I can see that the uh, pad name updates as well. So what I can do within Drum Machine Designer is to carefully configure a sort of entire drum kit production. And within this video, that's what we've done. We've started with a completely empty Drum Machine Designer collection of empty pads. And what we've done is to begin to populate those from the library. We've learned that we can swap an individual sound out using for a drum synth if we prefer, or if we want to work within the sampler, which is the default playback choice for these kit pieces, we've seen that we can make changes to individual parameters within those sampler windows directly within Drum Machine Designer without having to leave that area. We've also seen that effectively a track stack with a whole series of effects is added for every single instrument that you add within um, a sort of drum pad as you slowly populate it. That drum machine designer track stack will get bigger. And we've seen that we can even resample sounds directly within Drum Machine Designer as well. Meaning that if we want to fold down a collection of effects to create a new pad, we can do absolutely that. So this is a really nice way of being able to build kits of sounds, whether you want sort of traditional drum kits, whether you want synthesized drum kits, or whether or not you want a whole kind of resampled, crazy collection of sounds of your own.